Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a YouTube channel run by one James Corbett. In this video, Corbett makes some wild claims about the flu shot, especially in its relation to COVID-19. But as we'll see, the flu shot is something that you should absolutely get every single year, especially this year. So let's let him talk and then go over the science as to why he's wrong. Corbett Report member Scott wrote the following. Ohio gozaimas, James. I was reading some of the comments on a Jason Burmis video the other day and came across a comment that suggested that there was a link between the 2019 flu jab and COVID-19. Unfortunately, there was no link to any evidence of this. That's because there isn't. This got me thinking as I had the flu jab back at the end of November, and my very next blood test in December showed that my tumor markers were elevated for the first time since my operation. I had bile duct cancer back in September 2017. The tumor markers have continued to rise despite no tumors showing in my CT or PET scans. I did ask my doctor wife if the two could be related, but she didn't think this was possible. I hope that Scott is listening to his doctor wife and not James Corbett. And I'm going to direct your attention to an article called The Influenza Vaccine and COVID-19, which I think is worthy of your attention because it is not only well-researched, but more importantly, documented. Double underline that word, documented. Okay. Nope, still wrong. It makes the point that the top 10 countries in terms of COVID-19 mortality, as evidenced by Johns Hopkins themselves, are Belgium, Peru, the UK, Spain, Italy, Chile, Sweden, the US, Mexico, and France. And wouldn't you know it, all of them, every single one of those countries, injected more than 49% of their elderly populations with the flu vaccine. This can be contrasted with the bottom 10, the lowest COVID mortality uh, countries. Rwanda, Thailand, Mozambique, Sri Lanka, Papua New Guinea, Uganda, Tanzania, Taiwan, and Vietnam. With the exception of a 49% vaccination rate in Taiwan, all of those countries had extremely low flu vaccination rates. If you actually look at the data, it turns out that this statement does not hold up at all. Here is a graph showing influenza vaccination rates in people 65 years or older in 2019 from several countries. The countries that I have highlighted, Finland, Denmark, Greece, New Zealand, and Korea, all have influenza vaccination rates greater than 49% but all of them are also on the low end when it comes to deaths per million from COVID. In particular, Korea has a really high influenza vaccination rate among their elders, and yet they have been one of the most successful countries when it has come to dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. If this correlation were true, surely Korea must be higher. So why aren't they? Maybe it's just not true. Let's look at this from the other direction. Countries that had low influenza vaccination rates, did they all do well in the COVID-19 pandemic so far? No. The countries that I have highlighted on this graph now, Slovenia, Czech Republic, and Hungary, all did fairly poorly when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic, as noted by their high COVID-19 death rates per million. So far, there's no correlation. First, we have to show the correlation, and that is exactly what this article does with a lot of data that, again, is coming from mainstream medical sources. And it's important to point out that, yes, this article is taking these statistics that are being reported by the health agencies and Johns Hopkins and other official sources at face value and using those what we know to be manipulated statistics and showing that there is the correlation between uh, COVID-19 fatalities and flu vaccination coverage rates. So he thinks the data is false and manipulated, but he's using it to prove a point about flu vaccines? Here they get into the point that uh, in that 2009 swine flu season, there was a correlation that was found uh, between people who took the flu vaccination in the 2008-2009 season and people who had medically attended swine flu in the 2009 pandemic season. No, there's not. There was actually a lot of effort to follow up on the results reported by this one paper that this article is citing, and six follow-up studies produced conflicting results, reporting no association between the 2008 flu shot and 
a severe case of 2009 flu. So at best, it would be premature to make this conclusion. It's dishonest to say otherwise. In this article, Dr. Cunningham writes, after weeks brooding about the Donahue article linking flu shots to miscarriages, and there is a link, uh, it, or at least it references, and I will provide the link to that actual uh, uh, article they're talking about, uh, linking flu shots to miscarriages. Let me be very clear about this. Flu shots do not increase your chances of miscarriage. In fact, getting the flu as a pregnant woman is infinitely more dangerous, both for the woman and her unborn baby, than it ever would be getting a flu shot. If you actually read the paper that this article is citing, the authors were not very confident in their conclusions, and in fact they later did a follow-up study which was more robust, and guess what? They found no association between flu shots and miscarriages, consistent with other studies that have also looked for a link and found none. This is the problem that James Corbett has in this entire video. He only cherry picks particular papers in a wide body of literature that support his idea while throwing out papers that disagree with him. Year after year, they have quoted observational studies to announce 80% vaccine effectiveness, 60% vaccine effectiveness, 40% effectiveness. They do not mention that these studies make no effort to look for adverse vaccine effects. For example, narcolepsy, seizures, high fever, oculorespiratory syndrome. Wrong again. There are so many papers. There's a ton of work looking at the adverse effects of flu vaccines. It's all been summarized in this document, which I'll link to you in the description. It summarizes most, if not all, of the work that's been done to look for links between flu vaccines and everything from fevers or seizures to diseases like multiple sclerosis. Every single section describes observational and randomized controlled trials looking for links between flu vaccines and adverse effects, and every single section makes the conclusion that there is no strong link between flu vaccines and any of these adverse effects. Now, I know that the wording in these conclusions can seem a little vague, that they couldn't confirm or deny a link between these two things, but remember in science that proving a negative is always really difficult. And if you're looking for a link, but you just don't find one, then that's pretty close, usually as close as you're gonna get to proving that that link doesn't exist. Um, and then finally, the, the final point to make here in this article uh, that we're talking about, the link between the flu vaccine and COVID-19, they say the flu shot promotes other viruses. And it reads, as alluded to above, 2009 was not an anomaly. The flu shot routinely increases the rate of infection with other pathogens, negating any benefits of the shot. Okay, so what he's getting into here is this concept called viral interference. Now, the molecular mechanisms of this are not very well understood, so it's easiest to think of it as like a turf war. If your body is infected with the flu virus, it's kind of going to control the turf and not let another virus come in and infect you at the same time because that's competition to the flu virus. Now, this idea that the flu shot somehow makes you more vulnerable or increases your chances of becoming sick with a coronavirus or COVID-19 specifically, is just false, as we'll see in a minute. So let's let James Corbett finish his thoughts before we tear them down. However, one study to find an effect in adults found that while the flu shot appeared to offer cross-protection against certain pathogens for this population, the vulnerability to several other pathogens, including coronavirus, was specifically increased. So this is the one study that he's talking about. It's also been mentioned in the horrible documentary Plandemic, which I've already debunked. Overall, the authors of this paper find that there is no viral interference caused by a flu shot. However, in the details of the paper, they do say that there was an increased incidence of coronavirus infections in groups that received the flu vaccine. In the data, however, it is only a 2% increase. Now, the correct question to ask here is, are these results reproducible? The answer is no. 
If we do what James Corbett doesn't want to do and do a thorough search of the literature, we can find that much, much larger and long-term studies have asked this same question, whether or not the flu vaccine causes viral interference. In other words, does the flu vaccine increase your likelihood of being infected with another respiratory virus? And they all find the same answer. No, there is no increased risk. I'll provide links to all of these studies that I have flashing across the screen in the description below so you can see them for yourself. I guarantee you the normies in your life will say, the Home Vaccine Education Network? Well, that's not a reliable source. You might as well just send me a kooky conspiracy site. Oh, I'm not going to read that because that is the way that people have been trained to uh, dismiss any information without even looking at the information. You know, people like James Corbett are funny. Whenever they find a scientific study that they think supports their idea, they eat it up and just spread it everywhere. But the second a scientific study comes up that disagrees with their ideas, suddenly it's from the corrupt big pharma people who have all been paid off to deceive you. I wonder if he'll make that excuse with the papers I'm linking in this video. I hope, uh, Scott, that this at least goes towards answering your question. I don't know about this specifically with relation to the tumor markers, but I'm sure there are at least some uh, parts of this story that you could add up towards uh, viral interference and other sorts of explanations for a causal mechanism between uh, association with flu vaccination and some sort of increase in, in tumor markers or other things to do with, with your cancer or, or things along those lines. Again, I'll let you connect those dots for yourself and hopefully introduce your doctor wife to some of this information. You did the opposite of answering Scott's question. You lied to him and misled him. Scott, if you're watching this video, please don't listen to James Corbett, listen to your doctor wife, or listen to the experts. James Corbett is spreading nothing but flu vaccine and COVID-19 misinformation, and he should not be listened to. Instead, listen to the data. Read the literature if you want to understand it, or talk to somebody who knows the literature. Don't go to him. Getting your flu shot every single year is important in not only protecting yourself, but protecting those around you, the people who might actually have a rough time or die from the flu. And it's especially important this year, right now, because so many people are getting sick with COVID-19. Hospitals all over the U.S. are being overwhelmed. And with flu season upon us, if we have a bad flu season, this could be so much worse than it is. So get your flu vaccine. I got mine a couple weeks ago, and you can do it too. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's video. James Corbett will likely be a regular appearance on this channel. So if you found it informative, don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next Tuesday, where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.